news premieres next, only on BBC America. From NPR and BBC America, this is Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me's Royal Pain in the News, our transatlantic year in review quiz. I'm Carl Castle, your judge, scorekeeper, and voice of absolute authority. <laughs> now here's your host, the man with all the questions and none of the hair, Peter Sagal. Peter. It's been an amazing year. We had the Royal Wedding. We had the Arab Spring. We had the Anthony Weiner Fall. <laughs> now, uh, you may notice things are a little different on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me this time, uh, namely the fact that you can see me. <laughs> this isn't a nightmare, it's television. When we do the show on the radio, of course, you can't see us, but for this special end of 2011 edition, some folks from BBC America came to put it on TV. The British people are reduced to putting us on television. <laughs> I think we can say that sun has finally set. <laughs> Let's welcome our panel from Los Angeles, California. He's a stand-up comic, a licensed aircraft mechanic, and so tough, he intimidated his own hair clean off. Mr. Alonzo Bowden is here. Thank you, sir. From Santa Monica, California, a comedian, a mother, a cat lady, and fashion icon, our friend Paula Poundstone is here. And from Stoke-on-Trent to England, a very funny man who sounds even classier than he is, Mr. Nick Hancock is here. So... Let's get started with a game that this time we are calling Dear Friends and Family. Now, the rich and famous and powerful people, they're just like us. They send out holiday cards and, you know, they like to bore their families like anybody else. <laughs> Carly is going to read excerpts from three of their letters. Panelists, your job, of course, is to tell us who sent them. Alonzo, the first one is for you. Carl, if you could open the holiday letter envelope. Great news for the Berkowitz clan. Little Gary finally graduated from college and took a position on Wall Street. I guess he's working hard. He's even sleeping on Wall Street. <laughs> I guess he doesn't like the food, though. He keeps complaining about the pepper spray. <laughs> that letter is from the parents of a young man who, like many people, spent the fall doing what? Occupying Wall Street. Indeed, of course. <laughs> Occupying Wall Street. Very good. Now. 2011 was the global year of protest, it seemed. Here in the U.S., a nationwide movement changed the very meaning of the word occupied. Now it means a populist seizure of the center of power, when once it just meant somebody was in the airplane bathroom. <laughs> now... And, and, and both really bother people. Now, conservatives condemned the Occupy protests because they said they were messy. Because, you know... Of course, that's the hallmark of a successful populist protest, <laughs> being tidy. <laughs> we all remember Martin Luther King saying, I dream of a day when little black children will be able to join hands with little white children and put their toys away before the guests come over. <laughs> so did you guys watch the, uh, watch the protest? Did you watch it unfold? Oh, absolutely. I, I thought it was great. And it's funny you mentioned Martin Luther King because as black people, we were watching it saying, okay, what's the new part? Yeah. <laughs> What has changed here? When seeing white kids get hit by cops, we were actually, they, I mean, they truly felt as black as they could at that moment. <laughs> but, you know, God bless them and, and good luck with the pepper spray. Right. We had fire hoses. <laughs> <laughs> Not as spicy, little more pressure. <laughs> There were some, uh, some films of the police taking the tents down and uh, talk about neat, when they couldn't find all the poles, there was a lot of frustration. <laughs> really, you're out there, oh, I don't yeah. know how to work yeah. this. Yeah, you gotta exactly. fold it up and put it away. The yeah. cops yelling, we won't be able to use it again. That's exactly right. And it's they a problem. carefully folded them with the, with the elastic thing. Yeah. Very, very, uh, I, wonder, I wonder how much of this REI has been behind. <laughs> Thank you. 
No, Nick, did, did you have occupied yeah, protests? Yeah, we, we had exactly the same thing in London, only with worse teeth. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe your first comment, you go for a bad tooth joke. Why Bless not? you. Bless you, I sir. Just, do you know what? I'm listening, and there's words coming out, but I'm not really understanding anything that's been said here. Just yeah. Occasional words make some sort of sense. I right. know what it must feel like to be Sarah Palin now. Yeah. <laughs> just little bits. Right. But I'm going to confidently go on. Absolutely. Go for it, Nick. So yeah. tell me about the protests in London. Yeah. Well, one, one of the things that I really enjoyed about the protests in London was just what, one interview. One of the big things that the students worried about right. is graduate unemployment. And there was a great couple of graduates being interviewed on the news and one of them was saying this is my friend Gary my friend Gary got a first class honors degree he has not worked for three years and the newsreader said w what was his degree in and he went ghost stories <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's gonna happen yeah I know in a, in, a, in a sane civilized society there'd be full employment for <laughs> Ghost, ghost story, story scholars or yeah. something, yeah. <laughs> the Occupy protests have given us uh, the new uh, insult, you're the 1%, which is weird, because what you're basically saying to somebody is you are among the richest and most powerful people. I mean, it's like, it's like marching up to George Clooney and saying, way to be sexy, handsome face. <laughs> I was going to say, won't there always be a 1%? It doesn't matter what the difference is, there's always going to be a 1% yeah. at the top, no matter yeah. what happens. So it's kind of a pointless protest, isn't it, really? <laughs> it's saying let's get rid of, of a 1% out of the whole equation and only count up to 99. Right. <laughs> That's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> this is the spinal tap approach to yeah, ending exactly. the protest. I like that. Yeah. You are so deflating my tent right now. I know. <laughs> okay, Paula, Carl is going to open another holiday letter, and this time it's for you. Another great year for our family. A lot better than Osama bin Laden's year because I killed him. <laughs> Malia and Sasha both made the honor roll, which is the killing Osama bin Laden of elementary school. <laughs> and Michelle helped Americans lose weight. You know who doesn't have to lose weight? <laughs> Osama bin Laden. So who might be bragging a bit about his one big accomplishment this year, Paula? I don't think it's his only big accomplishment, by the way, but our president. All right, that was right, President Obama. So it's got to be rough when the biggest thing you've accomplished over the year is shooting a guy in the face. <laughs> Even Dick Cheney had his undisclosed location to fall back on. <laughs> Obama had, had such a tough year of plummeting approval ratings, uh, the country's credit was downgraded. All this has made him change his 2012 campaign strategy. Instead of running for re-election, he's just going to occupy the White House. I loved it when they threatened, like the, the, the hit against Obama, we're going to lower the nation's credit rating. Right. Do you really think you can scare a black man by lowering his credit rating? <laughs> Do you really think we're not ready for that one? <laughs> we just apply for credit in Canada's name. It's, <laughs> it's how we work around that. I think the entire country should be forced to watch Susie Orman for a day. <laughs> you Is she not the most frightening thing you've ever seen? She in your life? You, you seem traumatized. What? She's scary. She, you know what? She, I, she has the largest mouth I've ever seen in a human being. It's funny, it opens like back further than it's supposed to. Really? She, it's, li it's like, I, okay, it's like Guy Smiley from Sesame Street. <laughs> He's a Muppet. Yeah, I, I know. What do you mean? You know, have you ever seen Guy Smiley? I've seen Guy Smiley. Not, you, I know you who Guy Smiley so is. Not, uh, okay. What? I'm not a what? You, Finish you're just, the thought. You're like uh, the one and a half percent. You haven't seen. <laughs> All right, his head, okay, most of the Muppets, you know, they go like that, where they see how their jaw comes yeah. down like that, right? But with Guy Smiley, they make his head go back like that. And that's kind of the Susie Orman, you know, Dean. Ah! Why, why are we talking about Susie Orman? Because I don't know that much about the economy. All right. Nick? I just think that the, the enduring image for me of, yes. of last year is, is when they're all sat around the television watching Osama being yeah. shot, you know. And, it, it, you know, it's such a clear image. You can see it there. Uh, Hillary Clinton's there. They're all there. But every time I recall it, they've got pizza and beer. Right. <laughs> they, you know, it's a, and you sort of imagine that every single day he's texting everybody who's there saying, are you doing anything tonight? Because we're going to play the video again. I know. <laughs> 
I have to differ with you on saying that that was Obama's number one accomplishment well, in 2011. What do you think, do you think I that? think his number one accomplishment was being the source and the reason behind creation of a new reality show we like to call the Republican Debates. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Without Barack Obama, we never would have met Herman Cain. And I say... Alonzo, can you help me? Because, like, we, we get sort of drip-fed this in Britain, and I know there are a few people, and they're all semi-idiots, as far as I can tell. <laughs> but I'm never sure which one's which. So which is the one that slept with lots of women but hasn't slept with lots of women? Which one's here? That's Herman Cain. That would be Bill That's Clinton. Him. No. <laughs> Herman, Herman Cain right? did not do it, nor does he remember... He doesn't even remember not doing it. I mean, that's, right. that's a double insult to the lady concerned, isn't I it? I know. <laughs> and then there's another guy that said he had three policies but could only remember two. Or is yeah. that, that him would again? Be, that would be Rick Perry, that's Rick Perry. another, another right. genius we have, who, whose second department that he wanted to shut down would be education. Yeah. <laughs> and could not remember the third. If you can't remember the third, the second shouldn't be education. <laughs> now... Then they, they've got a bit of a problem because, you know, o Obama did kill bin Laden, which President Bush couldn't do. So how do you run against that? How do you run against the guy who got bin Laden? The only person Mitt Romney ever killed, for example, was the Mitt Romney from 2004 that believed <laughs> in gay marriage. Well, it, it was interesting that they all became anti-war as soon as that happened. Like, the next day, they, weren't they all saying, like, well, let's get out of Iraq? After everyone was saying, let's get out of Iraq for years, now... Suddenly, it, it was interesting how they shifted. So basically, whatever Barack Obama says or does, it's wrong. I think the best thing he could do right now is become a Republican. Right. <laughs> Nick, we have one last holiday letter, and it's for you. Carl? It was a challenging year for our family. Rupert and James had to go to Parliament <laughs> and answer rude questions from people we own. <laughs> Oh, and don't bother to write back. We already know what you've been up to this year. <laughs> so what powerful family had to endure some public humiliation this year? Yeah, that, that's the Murdochs, of The course, Murdochs, yes, yes, very good. Yeah. The Murdochs. Rupert Murdoch is the most powerful press baron the world has ever seen. He had to testify in front of the British Parliament about the phone hacking scandal in his newspapers. It was a shock to see him there. For many people watching Rupert Murdoch on TV in Britain, it was the first time they had ever seen a dead body. <laughs> playing out in Britain because it seems like it's a huge thing. I have a different view on this. I, I actually feel a little sorry for the journalists. If you're a journalist and you have to listen to, say, a hundred hours of Hugh Grant's phone messages... Right. You know, he, he takes him a long time to finish a sentence at the best of times. Right. He's quite a dull man. I think, I think that's, that's fine, fine journalism. The other thing that was really fascinating was that it turned out that they'd hacked the phones of 4,000 celebrities. Right. Okay. Are there 4,000 well, celebrities? Naturally, that, but that's the point. So there were people being right, righteously indignant, but also people going, was I one of them? <laughs> <laughs> In November, Parliament, uh, after the first round of inquiry, they, they called James Murdoch back to answer questions about even more damning revelations about bribes and kickbacks. Rumors have it that he'll be forced to resign from his father's company to be replaced by Murdoch's other sons, Uday and Kuse. <laughs> 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 in Britain, people got really upset with the Murdoch papers, or so I've heard, and many canceled their subscriptions. They did this, of course, by just leaving themselves a voicemail to that effect. <laughs> <laughs> and that is our holiday letter game. Thank you guys very much. You did well. Who wants some holiday tunage? Ooh, I do. Let's see what they pull up here. Oh, this is a good one. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. You can say I had the right away. Oh man, I turning off the music. Sorry, Nana. Get low prices every day on the latest smartphones, starting at 97 cents. Save money, live better. Walmart. When mucus causes <laughs> chest congestion, it can get in the way of your day. It's not easy keeping a place looking this spiffy. Maximum Strength Mucinex breaks up the mucus that causes chest congestion. It goes to work fast and provides long-lasting relief. Mucinex in, mucus out. If you're in